So again, a very good morning to everyone. I'll uh, actually focus exactly on what Sir mentioned. I'll try to talk about what the technology is all about, our own technology that uh, Click Solar has developed, and the various installations in the country uh, that are currently uh, operating in various industries. So, as we all know, solar can be used for uh, two purposes. One is for electricity generation and heat. Today, we are going to focus on heat. And the applications are various as uh, we saw, cooking, process heat, air conditioning, etc. So, I won't delve much on this. Even we also saw the various uh, uh, technologies classification. I have just done it slightly differently, classified it in concentrating and non-concentrating. So, as you go from top to bottom, the efficiency of the system keeps on increasing. So, a two-axis tracking system can have an efficiency system as efficiencies of about 60 to 65 percent compared to the top one flat plate evacuated tube collectors which have efficiencies ranging between uh, uh, 15 and 20 percent. Coming directly to the technology, the Arun technology is basically working on two basic principles. The one on the left, I think most of us might have tried something like this when we were young. You hold a magnifying glass on paper, you will see that the paper will start burning at the point of which all the sun rays are being concentrated. Take this principle and you combine it with the sunflower principle because the sun is moving from morning to evening and we want to capture the energy all throughout the day. So, magnifying uh, glass principle plus the sunflower principle will give you the Arun technology. This is how the Arun um, uh, system looks like. We've got multiple variants of uh, Arun technology, the Arun 160, Arun 100 and Arun 30. The numbers 160, 100 and 30 actually represent the size of the collector area. That is the area on which the sun rays are falling. The entire um, uh, sun rays that are falling on this collector area will be focused on one particular point at the receiver. If you see a very, um, this, this particular point. Not sure if you can, yeah, this particular, all the sun rays are being focused on this particular point. At this point, the temperatures achieved are very high. If it's, the heat is not evacuated, the temperature can be as high as 1500 degrees Celsius. But if um, you want to use that energy, you can use it up to 350 degrees Celsius. So, what concentration? Uh, generally, the concentration ratios achieved are about 500 X. So the basic principle, you've got a parabola. Most engineers would understand what a parabola is. This is a parabola. The focus of the parabola, the principle of a parabola is that anything that is perpendicular to the uh, surface of the parabola will get focused at the focus of that parabola. How do you use this now? So you take this parabola in the Arun technology, you frenalize it. What frenalization means is you cut it into small pieces. Manufacturing a continuous surface of a parabola, which is uh, in our case 14 uh, meter in diameter is um, difficult getting the accuracy of uh, the parabola will be difficult and even if you could make that transportation of this size of a parabola is impossible. So how do you still achieve that parabolic effect by uh, while, uh, while maintaining the cost uh, parameters. So you digitize it or you cut it into small pieces and you arrange all the small pieces in a manner so that they give you that 3D parabola effect. Now, when the sun rays are uh, incident on this, all of them will get concentrated at this particular point. Now, you collected all the energy, but you want to use it. Now, how do you use this high temperature? So, what you do is you pass uh, water through this particular point, and when you uh, when water is passed to this point, it gets heated because the temperature here is very high. And this, the by controlling the flow rate of this water, you can decide what temperature you want. So, if you want higher temperatures, you reduce the speed of water so that the water spends more time at this particular concentrated point and it gets converted to higher temperatures. So, it could be higher pressure steam or high, higher temperature pressurized water or if the fluid is oil, it can be thermic, hot thermic oil which can go up to even 300 degrees Celsius. The second aspect of the technology is the receiver. So, the receiver is um, uh, the point at which all the sun rays are concentrated. So, by having a good uh, Fresnel structure, you have managed to concentrate all the uh, sun rays at one particular point. But you also have to be able to extract that energy in a very efficient way, um, which is to 
ensure that there are minimum thermal losses at that particular point. So what we've designed is a cavity shaped receiver because it's a cavity shaped receiver and um, hot air tends to rise, all the energy is trapped in that receiver. So the efficiency of this receiver alone is actually about 95% plus. So what this means is of the energy that is entering the receiver, almost 95% is utilizable. The third aspect of the technology is the tracking. Uh, this is a two axis automatically tracking system. So the uh, sun doesn't move in the same plane in January as it will move in June. The plane of the sun will move. Um, so obviously there is east-west tracking which happens every day. So that's uh, uh, the single axis tracking system. And also it moves along with the seasons or um, along with the months. So that's the second axis tracking system. As a result, the surface of the dish is always looking at the sun at 90 degrees, capturing maximum energy at all points of the year, at all times of the year. Now we've got uh, this entire system which can generate steam or hot oil and you want to start using it. How do you use it in uh, your industry? This is what currently you have in any uh, existing um, he heating system. So you've got a boiler. This boiler will start delivering steam to the common header. This common header is then further delivering steam to various applications. Then you could have a condensate uh, return or you may not have this line, but the main principle is this. Now, what? how, how does the solar concentrator get uh, integrated with this? You have this solar concentrator field. This solar concentrator field will start delivering steam to this common header. So until the pressure of the steam it matches with this pressure of the common header, it will not deliver the steam. So whenever the sun is available, you get steam from the solar uh, steam generation system and you give it to the application. As a result, this boiler will get switched off. As a result, the fuel that the boiler is consuming will get switched off, which is, there is this is the way the fuel will be saved. Now, in, in case there are, say, um, uh, at night or during the rainy season, this is not available, so it automatically switches back to the existing system. So solar will always work in an add-on manner. You've got your existing system and you add it on with a solar um, field. Sometimes, which is typical of uh, a cooking application, uh, that the requirement of energy is different than the availability of uh, energy. Because the cooking happens early in the morning, it drops down during the day, again for the evening dinner it will start uh, increasing. However, the sun is available in a very different fashion. So how do you use this in the most efficient way for cooking applications or any application which where the demand and supply of energy is not matching? You have some kind of storage. Thermal storage is generally difficult, but uh, there are some ways in which you can store thermal energy. So there is a, a molten salt, we've done it using uh, pressurized hot water storage as well. And this is uh, the integration. The integration is very similar. You've got the existing system, you just have a pressurized storage tank here which can deliver steam when uh, the sun is not there. The sizing of the system uh, plays a crucial role. Just some key features, um, because the uh, dish is mounted on a single column, the footprint area that is required is very less. As a result, it can be mounted in places which have um, very complicated or very less um, uh, space availability. It can go up to higher temperatures, 300 degrees, 20 bar steam. Uh, it can also be used for non-solar operation, as I just mentioned in the previous slide. Um, very low maintenance because it is a very slowly moving structure. Um, Arun is the first IBR approved solar boiler in India. So when you are in steam, you need IBR approval. We've also been able to develop um, a, a steam generation system which will not require IBR approval. So that's one of the uh, new, recent, uh, very innovative developments uh, in the country. Um, it's a structurally very sound uh, product, so it can uh, bear very high uh, winds as well. These are some of the various applications where uh, any solar concentrator system can be used. Pharma, textile, you name the industry and any industry will have some kind of uh, thermal energy requirement. Uh, hospitality, so I mentioned about comfort cooling, community cooking, even in the residential sector. These are the various uh, solar thermal applications. Now coming to some of the installations uh, that we've done, uh, I'll talk about some of these briefly in the next uh, few slides. So that will give you a flavor of how uh, the uh, actual integration or how the systems are operating at various uh, places. Yes. Uh, heavy water board quota, um, 
we've installed four uh, is dishes for generating five bar steam, which is delivering almost about uh, 400 kg of steam per hour on a good sunny day. It's being used for uh, effluent evaporation. Uh, Akshadam Temple, very close to this place in um, uh, New Delhi, we won some good awards for this system. It is used for cooking. Uh, ITC Moja Hotel again in New Delhi. Uh, this is a installation worth seeing. You can understand how we made best utilization of the limited space that we had at this place. Uh, here we are delivering steam for laundry and cooking and plus uh, the remaining energy goes for bathing, uh, hot water for bathing. Uh, NDPC in Greater Noida, this is um, for uh, uh, cooling. So what we've done is uh, installed two dishes which can give steam. This steam is then delivered to uh, fire a vapor absorption machine which I uh, mentioned in the previous presentation. This vapor absorption machine's job is to convert heat energy into cold energy. And this cold energy is in the form of cold water which is given to the fan coil units in all the rooms. When air is blown over this fan coil units, you will get cooling in the room. So this is a very innovative way. There is almost negligible amount of electricity that is required. Chitale Dairy for milk pasteurization. Uh, TBS group, again, this was this was our first installation for cooling. NTPC was the second one. Uh, Mahananda Dairy, our oldest installation, we've given storage, uh, has been operating since 2006. MNRE has funded this project, IIT Bombay has supported it. Very much operating, we started also uh, getting some performance data which uh, MNRE has installed some instruments there. So it's one of our best performing systems because also it is in Latour, it is one of the best solar radiation place available in the country. And what about the NTPC cooling system? It is also operating very well, sir. Every day? Every, uh, whenever the sun is available. Obviously the solar radiation in Delhi is much lower than uh, say for example in Latour. So, Accordingly, the output you are going to get is less, lesser than what you will get in Natal. But we have designed the system such that on a good sunny day, you can give about 50 TR of cooling. And especially in NTPC, so on Saturday and Sundays, the office is shut. What we do is we store all the energy on those two days in the form of a cold water storage tank and we deliver it, uh, say on Monday or Tuesday, let's say the sun is not there or for longer hours, even when after, after the sun has been set. So that Storage is one of the most uh, innovative things that has been done in the country yet and we've received very good awards how, for that. How have you done the cold storage? Uh, we've got an insulated tank. Uh, so the tank contains almost about uh, 550 meter cube of water. So basically seven, degree. 7 degrees Celsius. Mahindra and Mahindra for um, pressurized water for degreasing process. So these are some of the installations uh, that we've done. Coming to the economics, very quickly, there are many incentives by the government. The project payback period actually depends upon what is the substitute fuel that you are using. So if you are using LPG, the payback can be less than three years. If you are using furnace oil, diesel, etc., three to four years. Coal, biomass, wood becomes longer. Cooling, it is slightly uh, longer, but with the efficiencies of the vapor absorption machine coming down, plus the costs of solar constant, it is going down this... Uh, is going to become the next big uh, segment in the country. Plus the electricity cost. Plus the electricity cost going up very much, very much. I'll just take one more minute to talk about our company, just last two slides. Um, uh, Click Solar is a turnkey solar, uh, solar thermal solution provider. When I say turnkey, it means from actually understanding the requirement of the user to giving lifetime support for almost 20 years. Uh, we, we take care of that because it's a system that is developed by us. We can ensure the performance for uh, the lifetime of the system. Um, we are a pioneer in this domain. We uh, installed our first concentrator in 2006 as it's still working extremely well. Uh, we are an MNRE channel partner. We won some very good awards. InterSolar is uh, solar's biggest awards in the world. And CSP today is uh, the concentrated solar's biggest awards in the world. We won awards for both these for best technologies in the last uh, one year. That's it from me. These are my coordinates, my phone number and my email ID. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, man.